Welcome back to Google Guru. This video is brought to you by Kevin Brookhauser, Google Apps Certified Trainer. Okay, so I've got my template, I've got my roster, and the next step is to run Doctopus. And Doctopus is run through the scripts. Before I do that, let me just rename this to um, Macbeth Roster. Click OK. Now when I'm here, you'll see that I've got the Macbeth roster and then the Macbeth essay machine, and that's the template. So now go back to the roster, and the roster is like the hub of everything that's going to happen. Now under the tools file, you'll see what's called the script gallery. And under the script gallery, I want you to search for Doctopus, D-O-C-T-O-P-U-S. And uh, don't select the North Korea Doctopus one. I don't know what that is. It's this one, Doctopus version 4.2.6. That may change later. Click install and then click continue. And we got an error. I don't think that error is going to be problematic. So I'm going to click Doctopus and then launch installation. You'll see nothing really changed except I now have this Doctopus menu. Now I click launch installation and the app needs authorization to run so you're going to provide that authorization um, we got request details some invalid and so sometimes we get some errors like this and we're just going to keep running through it and that should take care of it authorization to run let's see if it gets this okay now it's asking for permission and this is normal click accept um, this does require a little bit of time ahead of time to set this up, but I promise you that it will save a lot of time, especially if you have uh, many students like I do. So we've launched the installation, and we've approved it, and now we're going to actually run the script. And so it actually walks you through it. So step one, sharing basics, set up sharing basics. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to go with the individual uh, all the same with the desired sharing arrangement. This is the simplest way to do it, and that's uh, if you want to dive into these other features, definitely they're worth playing around. But um, I'm going to click no access for the whole class, but I'm allowed each individual who gets a copy of this to allow them to edit. And then the sheet that contains my roster is sheet one. That's right here, sheet one. That contains my roster. And then the column containing student email addresses is not section number. So under section number, I need to click Google username to make sure that it knows which one is the username. So then the column containing excuse designation, you can just leave that blank. So I'm just going to go to save settings, which is right at the bottom. And you will see this Doctopus going to work. And then it says uh, choose the documents you want to copy and distribute. And I'm going to scroll down to Guru Assignment. And then it says select the template file and uh, it's Macbeth SA Machine is the template that I created. It found that in the folder Guru Assignment. And then click Save Settings. And now it's going to work. And now it says choose the destination folder, setup file, naming convention, or naming and notifications. So the folder is the same thing. It's going to be the guru assignment folder that I selected earlier. You could create a new folder if you'd like. And then it asks you to name the, uh, how, how do you want the names of the files to be uh, created? And you can use these variables that you created that they will pull from your uh, roster. So I'm going to start with section number. I always name my my uh, documents beginning with section number so I'm gonna click section number and you must include the spaces in between each variable so uh, section number space last name space first name and then Macbeth essay um, you can notify editors immediately upon sharing. You can even include a custom note. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click Save Settings. And then finally, it confirms to make sure that this is how you, how you want it to look. And I'm going to run, copy, and share. And so what it's doing right now is creating a document for every single one of these rows, and it's sharing those documents with the usernames in those rows. It is making you, as the creator, the owner of these documents, and then the students, the editors, or the people listed here as, uh, as editors. Oh, you're the owner, and then these are the editors of that document. And so you can see that there, there's actually he's created one already. And he's going to be creating the other three. Uh, one of these is actually not going to work because uh, it's an account that's locked down. It's restricted, and it's it's set so that people outside of that domain cannot uh, share files with 
people and I'm outside of that domain. Um, that is by design. It says uh, problem with sharing with. Um, I set that up so that you knew what would happen if you got an error like this. This is because that's a lockdown domain and that's a domain intended for younger kids and they don't want to be sharing outside of that domain. So um, some we had some problems. That's uh, to be expected. But here is uh, the spreadsheet that uh, is created after you create all these documents. And you can click here and it'll go directly to those documents. Um, let me show you what it looks like on the user end. So if I go back to, to some of my, my other accounts, so I've shared a document with you and this was just created one minute ago. And I can actually take a look at this and here's the template the essay machine and uh, it says three Brookhauser me that was my last name Kevin Macbeth essay so three is the section number so I can type in here here I am typing and now I go back to my original um, file and if I click on that one that's right here I click on it as the teacher I can go in and look and see if this student has done any work and that will load that document and here as this loads I can see that yes he has already done work he's wrote I am typing in here and as that continues to load I should be able to see that yeah he is actually in the document and I could actually have a chat with that student so this is a super way to keep track of all of those documents um, there are other features that you might want to use in the future there's an automatic rubric uh, form called Gubric that you might want to look into. Embargo for grading if you're grading those and you don't want them to edit while while you're grading them then you can lock it down and so once you're done once you finish grading everything you can actually transfer ownership to all the students so you don't have that locked into your inbox. So I really believe in using Doctopus as a way of managing many, many documents um, and it allows you as a teacher to have control over those documents.